Bill O'Neill. Yeah, what a great start for any professional bowler on the PBA Tour. Bill O'Neill gets off to a red-hot start, capturing his third major. And that $100,000 that he won in Wichita, that's going to loosen up an arm swing pretty quick. Bill O'Neill's proving it once again this week, this day, making his fourth telecast of the season. Aging like a fine wine, Mr. O'Neill, feeling super steady about his game. But E.J. Tackett will lead us off this afternoon, and our Kimberly Pressler is with him now. Thanks, John. So, EJ, I don't know about you, but I'm having deja vu. I feel like we've, we've been here before. We've done this. Yeah, a couple of times, I think. Well, let's talk about the fact that you have made five consecutive shows. Let's pretend that it was somebody else, anybody else that made five shows. What would you think of that? Uh, I mean, the only word that comes to mind is impressive. I, I, it's so hard to make a TV show, and uh, you know, I, I bowled really well, and if anybody else did it, I'd be in awe of it. And what do you think about the fact that you've made five consecutive shows? Uh, obviously, I'm bowling really well. I just need to bowl a little bit better on TV. Obviously, I haven't done too well on, on the, under the lights this year, but hopefully we can change that today. Good luck to you. Thank you. Let's revisit the step ladder here. EJ Tackett qualifies to the final five as the wild card, as the highest seeded player to lose in the quarterfinals. They went with three six game qualifying rounds, 18 total games to cut to the top 24 for bracket match play, then a round of 24 between seeds 9 to 24, a round of 16, and then we got to one through eight. A 21-time PBA champion with four major titles, the reigning PBA Player of the Year, E.J. Tackett. Nice opening shot by E.J. Tackett, and look how deep he is already, already into the 25th board. From Seaford, Delaware, he owns four PBA regional titles, Tim Foy, Jr. Seaford, Delaware, about an hour south of here. A huge following. Tim oh, right defeated here. Nate Stubler in the round of eight. What a story this guy is. No. Slinging 7-4, Tim Foy to start. What a nice opening shot for this correctional officer. John, I'll let you, I'll let you dive into that a little bit more as we move along in this match. It's a great story. And cleans up the seven. Yes, a corrections officer for 12 years. Tim thought about being a cop. That was his, his first thought career-wise. Graduated college from Warwick, and he wanted to be a cop. He was passed on. Next best job 
at the prison. And he really has loved the job. He said it's a misunderstood occupation. And he told us, once you've seen all that he's seen in his career as a correctional officer, this is nothing. This stage, there's no stress here. Yeah, I was like, well, he said it's different type of pressure. <laughs> he likes this kind of pressure. Take a look at the two-hander who used to use his thumb with this style and took it out during COVID. And he said, man, it made all the difference in the world in my game. And there's a power revolutions and the pin action that comes with it. Tackett opens with a double. Let's take a look at today's Brunswick oil pattern, the Billy Hardwick 44. Yeah, so remember the lane is only 60 feet in length and 44 feet is fairly long, but the key for this pattern in this building is getting your bowling ball through the front part of the lane. Look for the left lane to hook almost an arrow more than the right lane. And the heads in this center tend to have a lot of friction and that has to somehow affect getting to the break point consistently, right? Yeah, absolutely. You don't want your break point to be at, at your feet. You know, you want, you never want to see the ball hook early. So the players will combat that with the type of equipment they're using and what they do with their hand at release. Sharp start for the reigning PDA player of the year. Meanwhile, Tim Foy has a great connection with Parker Bone. He was his ball boy back in an event in the late 90s. Oh, yeah. Oh! With bad intentions, the messenger comes by and swings at the 10. So let's flash back to the 1997 Whoa. PBA Brentwood Classic. Is that Parker? You bet it is. And how about that That's hair? That's awesome. Look at Tim and that hair. It's Caddy. Oh, uh, it's so cool. Stay close. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tim. <laughs> uh, That'll work. Making his second career TV appearance, the other being in 2021 at the Players' Championship. East Region Finals. He lost to Chris Fye, God, Timmy. who bowled a 300. Looked like Tim may have been in jeopardy of a shot clock violation, but he got it off in time, I'm being told. And take a look at EJ Tackett's arsenal. He's going with his favorite, the Primal Shock. Well, one of his favorites. He likes that Venom Shock a lot, too. It's easy to see why it's one of his favorites because he's been perfect thus far and you were bringing up the, the shot clock. Players have 25 seconds from the time they touch their ball to begin their delivery. EJ playing the right lane, a good five boards to the right of the left lane as we take a look at his road to getting here. He lost to David Kroll, who we'll see later on this show, but because he was the highest seed remaining in that round of eight, he was the wild card and this fifth seed, trying to replicate Anthony Simonson, who ran the stepladder two weeks ago. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that was a fast ring and ten. It, it looked like it wrapped around... That the six pin wrapped around the 10 so fast it could have created its own vortex and sucked that 10 right off the deck. That was how quick that was. You felt like last week he, he caught some bad luck. I, I did. I, and, you know, we're going to show it uh, or possibly show that spare in the ninth frame that he missed where 
It was uh, it was pretty bizarre. <coughs> Another good one. And we take a look at Tim Foy Jr.'s arsenal going with the stealth. Done a million times. And take the lead right here halfway through. He does just that. Hey, let's go down to the floor and talk to Parker Bone III. Hey, Hall of Famer, John Fanta, Randy Peterson up in the booth. Uh, tell us a little bit about your special relationship with Tim. Well, I've known Timmy for a long, long time. Obviously, I grew up with his dad. But uh, one of our tour stops there out in California, he uh, was living close by and came along. And, well, fortunately for me, he was my caddy that whole week. And I was victorious. And I'm going to hope today that just me sitting back here, a little giant role reversal, he can be victorious. Hopefully you gave him a good tip there, Parker. Well, he's off and running right now. It's in his hands. Four in a row for Foy. Messenger. I did not want to accept. I meant tipping him for being his ball caddy for the week. <laughs> not for today. We know you gave him tips for today, Parker. I mean, Hall of Famer and all. One of the greatest ever. But yeah, Tim, you're right. That was a good shot. Very similar to EJ Tackett's last shot on that left lane. The hometown man, Tim Foy. What a great crowd here at Mid-County Lanes Entertainment in Middletown, Delaware. This center hosting a national telecast in the PBA Tour for the first time ever. Let's take a look at our Bowl TV highlights. Tim Foy was facing Nate Stubler in the round of eight this event. Match was tied 3-3 after game six. Heading to a decisive game seven. Foy needed a mark in the 10th frame and a good count. He converted the 10 pin, then struck out on the final shot to lock up the match and a berth on today's TV show. And here's how they've gotten here. We saw some drama. Bill O'Neill beating Don Barrett 4-2. Tomas Kalka, who is seeking his Wait, first ever PBA. Say, say that last name again. Kalka. Okay. I'll call him Tomas. But, I mean, look at that. He, he sweeps Jason Belmonte? Wow. And they're on the same league team. They are. Tack it out of the break with a strike. With more on EJ Tackett, here's Kimberly. Well, guys, EJ's wife, Natalie, couldn't make today's show because last night she bowled in and won the Indiana Queens Tournament in Anderson, where EJ made the show last weekend. EJ told me earlier that he watched the live stream, and he was so excited that he was screaming while he was sitting at the restaurant. So the big question is, guys, will there be two tackets raising the trophy this weekend? Congratulations, Natalie. That's awesome. She's a, she's a heck of a bowler. The Tackett's becoming parents, their son Trip. We get new pictures every week. A cutie. And Not again. again. Yep. Same trash on that same lane. Back-to-back -back ring tens for EJ Tackett, fifth and seventh. Just a great shot, both of them. I mean, EJ could be perfect through seven right now. That's what he talked about with us, Randy. The art of being on TV. You go through all this qualifying all week. He has the best average of any of the five here at 234.22 on the week. But he said everything on TV goes quicker. <laughs> and conversely, Tim Foy told us, look, he wishes that every event was inside this center. He's so comfortable here. And he said, if I bowl 10 really good shots, I know I can beat anybody. I mean, it's pretty easy to figure out why this guy has confidence, right? I mean, he deals with hardened criminals every day. I mean, this is bowling at its highest level. He's ready for it. And the first shot 
that we've seen go light from either of the two players. All right, that was okay. It's a first round of commercials, hard to me. It's always hard. Probably a little farther right than he wanted it. And at a commercial break, it's always tough, but that's part of this game. This is the second TV show ever. Hey, I'm missing a five. Let's take a look at how Tim Foy, Tim Foy is playing right lane versus left lane. You can see his launch position, a good six boards inside on that left lane. Five boards at the arrows, break point about the same. A little bit slower ball speed on that left lane. He's got to be farther left, both players do, on the left lane to get rid of the hooking part of the front end of the lane. Beauty. Said he had a regular Saturday. Took his daughter to gymnastics, went to the grocery store, slept perfectly, didn't have the nerves yesterday. He said, I, I think as we get closer, I'll have them. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Looks pretty comfortable right now. I love his messaging, though. He's just talking with himself all throughout. You see that graphic there, EJ Tackett. Oh no. Uh oh. We talked about it in the open. What happened? Inadvertent shots and bad times for EJ Tackett. Get the ball over to the right side of the three pin, cut it into the four seven. See the average of just under 21%. My, oh my, what a conversion to keep himself in it. EJ Tackett throws it hard with Loft to keep it online, cuts the three into the four. And the three takes out the seven as well. What a shot by E.J. Tackett. Everybody sent home. When and Randy, it feels like every week, E.J. has had that type of setup, something similar to that. He has not been able to convert that shot. Well, and we saw that graphic about the five consecutive telecasts. And look at some of the names that are on this list. Don Johnson did it over two season, seasons. Earl Anthony. Chris Barnes did it in 2000. Walter Ray did it twice in 2000 and 2001. The last player to do it, Jason Couch, in 2001. 23 years. Is that shot the type of shot that can totally swing this day for him? Mm, yeah, and, and, and having bad carry won't help him at all. And it's three consecutive shots on the left lane that he's aced, and all he has to show for it is nine spare, nine spare, and a possible nine spare here if he converts the seven pin. Just lousy pin carry, and all on the same lane, the left. Nine spare, nine spare, nine spare on the left. The last three. And so Tim Foy, the corrections officer, from just an hour away, is in the driver's seat at the moment. Just have fun. Just have fun. Time out. Mm. Yeah. Shot clock was down to 10, and he looked up and saw that. And I think this is a really good move. That's your only one. Why? He needs to buy some time, regroup. This is the biggest shot of the game of this match for Tim Foy. Is this the biggest shot of his life? No, not yet. That would only happen in the title match. Let's have fun. It's 
all you can do. All right, that was my kid. He's got his two kids here, Savannah and Kaylin. Three and 11, his wife, Belinda. Boy delivers. I mean, to throw a shot yeah. like that, after all that. Pretty incredible. I mean, he calls a timeout, then there's a, a distraction in the audience. It turns out to be his daughter. He gets a reset. Look, I, I know what you mean on the biggest shot of his life in the title match, but thus far in his bowling career, the build-up to that, a stoppage, a, he needed a timeout, his daughter, that, that could have gone south. Yeah. It, that could have gone south. Like I said, I mean, to ace a shot like that was pretty amazing after all the stuff that went on prior to him letting go of it. Needs 17. What a great shot by Tim Foy. He's going to move on to match number two. Another disappointing loss for EJ Tackett. And Tim Foy's consolation prize, he gets Bill O'Neill. <laughs> well, oh, will the seven give? It didn't take the Sunday lunch invite. Well, let, let me just say it's a good thing that didn't happen on his first shot. Yeah, I'd say. You're all good, Tim. He said, how many? You're all good. Good luck. Just a test shot. Yeah, I don't think he's going to throw that one. That thing stood up pretty, pretty quick. And when you can say that to EJ Tackett and say that you've beaten EJ Tackett, just his second television appearance. And for Tackett, this is disappointing. You know, I, I sent EJ a text after he made the telecast a couple of days ago, and I said, man, you've got Thank to be you. exhausted. And he said, Randy, I am. You think about all the games, all of the mental highs and lows he's gone through. Thank you, everybody. And the frustrations that have come with it. But what a run for EJ Tackett, your reigning player of the year. Five straight finals appearances. First time in 23 years that we've seen five straight shows get made by someone, but Tackett and early exit. Let's flash back to Monday, January 15th, our first event of the season, PBA Players Championship in Wichita. Bill O'Neill qualifies the number two seed. He met the number one seed, Tom Smallwood, in the championship match. Bill defeated Tom 209 to 178, his third career major title, his 14th career PBA Tour title. As we reset the step ladder, Tim Foy Jr., the man from Delaware, defeating E.J. Tackett, and now Foy gets the player's champion. And Bill O'Neill has his family here. His wife, Christy, quite literally just arrived. Daughter Avery, son Gavin, who had his own competition earlier today. He was on the basketball court in the playoffs. And as soon as the buzzer sounded, <laughs> they absolutely sprinted to the car and hit the road. The Kim family just made it yeah. in the door. I saw you looking over there. Happy they finally made it here? Yeah, I would have liked if my son would have won his basketball game today to make, to make the day a little better. But, um, you know, uh, it's good to have him here. You know, I, I love him. The family's here, and uh, it's special. And you guys are wearing matching jerseys. I absolutely yeah. love that. But let's talk about this match right here, because you talked to us in pre-show interviews, and you said that you watched other athletes in match play, and then you put together strategies when you're moving forward with mm -hmm. them. 
Watching this match, did you learn anything so that uh, you can use it against him coming up here? I learned that the left lane hooks, uh, so I watched that. They're, they're, it's about five drier, and uh, it was kind of that, that way all week, especially with the, the length of the ball returns. You have to, you know, it's hard to get that far left on the on, on the right lane. So I'm just gonna, have to, you know, keep my eye open on those things and just try to, you know, get my hand in the right spot and do the right thing. Good luck to you. Thank you. And there's his family. His daughter Avery, his son Gavin, his wife Christy. Bills Rocks. He's from Langhorne, Pennsylvania. Huge Eagles fan. Winning that Players' Championship 14 years after his first major win, the U.S. Open. So how's this for you, Tim Foy? Your second ever national telecast. Shots for this move. It's half a game. You beat E.J. Tackett, now you have to face Bill O'Neill. On that left lane. Foy. He owns 14 PBA Tour titles with three majors, the real deal. Bill O'Neill. Interesting that he brings up the left lane, which was an issue at the United States Open. Yeah, and then a couple of weeks after that. So some super washouts at the U.S. Open back to back on the left lane for Bill and then a couple of 2-4-10 combinations on that left lane. And it, interesting that he said the left lane hooks more. We know that from match number one. Ten on the right lane. Good shot for Bill to start. Bill choosing to actually finish on that left lane. Interesting. He obviously likes it better than the right as he switches to a urethane bowling ball to shoot his 10th pin. He defeated Chris Vi 4 0 in the round of 16, then Dom Barrett 4 2. In that matchup with Vi, Bill averaged 260, Vi averaged 190, and Bill just said he was trying, Vi was trying to separate his angles a lot, and Bills were a lot straighter. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it, it, it's kind of crazy when you think about those scores. We take a look at Bill's arsenal. He's going with the, the theorem. Oh, chip four, baby. Oh, at the last moment it gave. Yeah, it's like hitting 11 and getting a 10, right? <laughs> it's nice. It's a good hit. And again, we can see just how much different, how much stronger that left lane is. You can see how deep Bill O'Neill is compared to the right lane. Ooh. And again, he's a good four boards left on the left lane. Somebody said Bill's 42. Oh, boy. Come on, Timmy. Yes, he is. Does Bill know he's 42? No. Not good. I mean, what a level uh, he's performing at here in 2024. Boy, didn't like that. Two pin all day. But he'll take the two. Bear down. It's a good break. Hey, John, how about the only show? after we watched Tim make this stupid. How about the only show that Tim Foy Jr. made? <clears throat> yeah, the only show he made, PBA Players Championship East Region Final in Florida 2021. Bill O'Neill had to pull out of the event due to COVID. And as alternate, Foy had to get from Delaware to Jupiter, Florida overnight in order to bowl. Ended up facing Chris Vi. Who bowled the 300? He flew all the way yeah. down to Florida to, to be on the receiving end of that. I know, right? That's tough. He bowled nice, too. Could have shot 260. Yeah, there's that left lane starting to go. And next time up, Tim will make a move. A little bit inside a target. There's only a couple more boards left on that left lane. Check. Oh. 
I mean, his lay down on that left lane is 37 and a half. I, I think there's only 39 boards on the mm, lane. That's tight. All of our great stats come to us from our dear friends at Lane Talk. You want to be a better bowler? Want to shoot higher scores? Head on over to lanetalk.com. Back to O'Neill, the 14-time champion. Players champ in 2020 and 2024 this year, and the 10 hangs. Little soft 10 for Bill O'Neill, not getting that ball to come around the corner quite hard enough to drive the six into the 10. His fourth championship round in six events. He lives 90 minutes north of here in Langhorne, PA. While we have a second, I'd like to, uh, on behalf of the PBA and our production crew, send out our condolences to our director, David Newman, who lost his father a couple of days ago. Uh, David, we're all thinking about you, and all of our thoughts and prayers are with you and the Newman family. May Bob rest in peace. There it is for Bill O'Neill, a strike. In his final frame against Don Barrett, with the game having already been decided, he left a 1-2-6-10. <laughs> Same split that he left and missed twice in the U.S. Open show that we talked about. This time, he made the spare. A better one. Well, at the U.S. Open, he left the 1-2-4-6-10 twice. <laughs> you put the four pin in with that. <laughs> and not to be a stickler, but. You are a stickler. That's what makes you great. Yeah, thanks, John. And something just stuck the 10 pin. <laughs> Straight out of Shawshank, this one. Head pin, sidewall. See a 10. Remember, Red, hope is a good thing. Maybe the best of things. And no good thing ever dies. All right, better shot. Come through it. Come through it. Oh, no. Uh oh. It's on me. What happened? Bad shot. Out of his hand poorly. This ball just hydroplanes. He just misses it at the bottom. Ooh. And an open. Probably further than it looks. And so for Bill O'Neill. The door opens a little bit more there. Yeah, for that ball not to come around the corner on the left lane, it has to be thrown poorly. O'Neal sees the opening, takes advantage, and he's got control right now. And, you know, we, we talk about Bill O'Neill's old school style and and right now he's playing the lanes old school as we take a look at PBA, P, I'm sorry, the PBA.com 2024 PBA LBC National Championships. Take it away, John. Registration for the 2024 PBA LBC National Championships is now open to bowlers of all skill levels and from all centers. The PBA LBC National Championships is heading to a new location outside Chicago and includes two new junior divisions. I, I'm sorry. I, I know you're trying to get that that in and I was talking all over you but I wanted to say something come on seven about how O'Neill's playing this oil pattern it's we talk about his old school style and he's playing this pattern kind of old school called a, we call it a hook set type of look so watch his ball reaction watch the ball start to come left and then all of a sudden it kind of stops you see that especially on the right lane he talked with us earlier this week about the difference between qualifying and then getting on TV. 
He said back in the day, he'd watch the Welcome back to Middletown, Delaware. 2024 PBA Delaware Classic for Mid-County Lanes and Entertainment hosting a PBA national telecast for the first time ever. And we've got Bill O'Neill with the lead over the local man, right. Tim Ford. A good one. Earned his way into the field this week through the pre-tournament. Aaron strikes out of the commercial. Hey, we're going to go down to the floor and speak with PBA champion Mike Wolf, who is the tour rep for both players currently going at it right now. Mike Wolf, uh, let's talk about uh, old school Bill O'Neill. We talk about his style and, and the way he likes to play the lanes, but right now it looks like his ball motion is kind of old school, kind of a hook stop look. Yeah, he's slowly going to, made a lot of good shots in there. He's going to slowly back his hand back into it. Uh, kind of being nice at the bottom, but he's going to go ahead and catch the holes a little bit more in the last couple shots. Uh, Mike, let's uh, continue on with Tim. Tim Foy, his bar, his bar reaction looks pretty good, but that one Aaron shot in the fifth frame, what happened? Yeah, I think he felt like he didn't feel it all the way to the right. Um, he kind of closed it down a little too much. He might have overmoved. He got it to the right wheel, and that would just be the overcompensation of the last shot on that lane, correct? Yeah, absolutely. He's probably in the middle of a ball change to get something a little faster down lanes where he can open it up a little bit more. All right, Mike, thanks very much. Sir. Sure. It's got to be better than that against these guys. Hmm. That sums it up from Tim. What do you like about his game? I mean, I, I think it's just real simple and compact for a two-handed style. And he's got plenty of velocity and power. And obviously, he's got a lot of confidence in his ability. But this guy is a wily veteran, the master manipulator. Player that uses his thumb can do just about every trick with a bowling ball you can think of. Another strike for Bill O'Neill, who's got the 22 pin lead. Yes, he would watch Norm Duke, Tommy Jones, Chris Barnes, sometimes lose a game intentionally when in, they're when they're in matchups. And in, why is that? In the bracketed format, because it's a seven-game match. No way! Wow. Why? Why? would you lose a game intentionally? So it's just two players on a pair of lanes for the best four out of seven match, right? You'll see these players intentionally build a spot for them. They make It may cost them a game or two, but they know if they stay in a certain zone long enough, they're gonna develop that lane, that pattern is going to develop into something very, very nice for them. Where they may lose the first game or two, but win the last four by 50 pins a game. And so what they do is they build a spot they build some mistake area both right and left of target. That one could have went through. And then they get just real comfortable and start executing, throw a lot of strikes. Bill is a huge Sixers fan because he's a Philadelphia yes. guy. Yes, he is. He likened it to an NBA playoff series. Sometimes a team will win a game in the series, but an adjustment was made by the losing team, and then they use the rest of the series playing the long game. Right. Boys eighth. Hook. Said hook. Yep. Said hook because it was a little late coming up the hill. And the result is that soft 10. Man. Well, you know what? This is kind of fun. No matter what happens. But it's not good. over yet, Tim. No. Clean this up, and does. And he's right in what he just said at the same time. Regardless of what happens, the fact that he's standing here right now is a great accomplishment for him. Well, it is. And, and right now, what he needs to do is he needs to strike here in the ninth frame and here. give himself you a chance. Know. One good one here, and you never know. Exactly. 
He will turn 37 on Monday. Really needs a strike. Yeah, he's not going to get it. Trouble. Two in. He told us, look, when I made that show back in 2021, that was because of COVID. It was because Bill O'Neill got COVID, and he was the sixth man who then got to fly down and, and face Chris Vi. He said there was something more rewarding here and something fitting that O'Neill was on this show with him. Yeah. That this one, there, there's nothing slight about this. He, he earned this to get here. He did. Made it through the rabbit squad, the PTQ. We used to call it the Rabbit Squad back in the day, pre-tournament qualifier. And earned his way to the telecast today. With Parker Bone, the Hall of Famer, watching him. as this matchup has gone on. And Bill O'Neill's going to be moving on. And he'll be moving on to face David Boog Kroll, who is making his first ever television appearance. Needs just eight. That'll be enough. The real deal is moving on. Bill O'Neill seeking his second win of 2024. Family made it just in the nick of time, and now they're hoping for a championship Sunday afternoon. The two men that he has to go through if he's going to win this event have never won on the PBA Tour. What do you want to see? Next up, David Boog. Come back to Mid-County Lanes and Entertainment in Middletown, Delaware. And Bill O'Neill, the PBA Players Champion this year, the 14-time champ, gets past the hometown man, Tim Foy. And so now, O'Neill will take on David Kroll, our number two seed, Tomas Kalka, the man from Finland is the number one seed. So let's turn to our PBA Elite League update. Earlier this week here in Middletown, the PBA Elite League presented by Snickers held rounds nine and 10. The Motown muscle with EJ Tackett and Anthony Simonson picked up two wins as they avenged their loss to the Waco Wonders. Then took down the Lucky Strike LAX. The Portland Lumberjacks with Wes Malott and Kyle Troop fell behind 1-0 in both of their matches and rallied in both to defeat the NJ Kingpins and the Akron Adam Splitters. Here's your standings. What's your reaction? Uh, my reaction is what the hell is going on down there in Waco? One and eight. Las Vegas on top with Portland as expected at seven and three. Welcome back, everybody, to Delaware. I'm John Fanta. My partner is Randy Peterson. So what's the storyline here with O'Neill, the 14-time champion? The other two players, David Kroll and Tomas Kalka, they've never won on the PBA Tour. I think it's a huge advantage for Bill for uh, the experience factor. And then also, he's got a game under his belt, and he's got a really good feel of what the lanes are doing. But I think the player that conquers the left lane the rest of the way is going to win this tournament. Ready for some pressing questions? Sure. Let's do it. With Kimberly Pressler, this week's topic is two-handed bowlers, folks. Our pressing questions this week presented by Go Bowling. Tom, have you ever bowled two-handed? I have. Um, it's a young man's game. It's, it's kind of hard. I don't got to be a little thinner, I think, than, than what I'm built for. I'm probably one of the only people on the planet that when I bowl two-handed at my rev rate goes down. I wish I grew up bowling two-handed. It'd be so much better. Really? Why don't you try it now? Oh, that's a different, that's a different beast. That's like learning how to bowl 
all over again because I may be able to throw it okay, but I have no idea where it's going. Stu, have you ever tried two-handed bowling? No, because I can't get my left arm past my stomach, so it doesn't work out good for me two-handed. Have you ever bowled with one hand? I have. And how was it? It's better than you think, but it's it's not great. Kyle, I know you have this two-handed bowling thing down, but have you ever bowled one-handed? Uh, yeah, I'm one for one on television in the uh, the King of the Lanes Family Edition. I threw a ball one-handed and struck. 100% strike ball with one hand, baby. Coming up next, it's David Kroll gearing up to take on Bill O'Neill. Match number three is ahead. The PBA is proud to have Bowlers to Veterans Link as the official charity of the PBA Tour. In today's BVL Salute to Veterans, we welcome U.S. Air Force Master Sergeant Don Williams, who served for 20 years. Thank you for your service, Don. To donate, go to BVL.org. Here is where we stand on the step ladder. Bill O'Neill beating Tim Foy Jr. Tim beating EJ Tackett. So now it's David Kroll making his first ever television appearance. Let's learn more about him with Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, John. So, David, uh, they just talked about the fact that this is your first show ever, but you almost made the U.S. Open. But the guy you're going up against is actually the one who took you out at the U.S. Open. But you said that he actually inspired you after that. Why don't you tell us what happened? Yeah, so after the U.S. Open, uh, I missed it by 40 pins. Um, to be that close at a major was honestly amazing. But to have Bill come over and just say all these kind words like, hey, you're so close. Like, you have a future out here. Just keep at it. Don't give up. And it just, man, it made my day. And honestly, that whole event. Well, now you got a chance to go get a little redemption from Bill O'Neill, even though he inspired you. But uh, <laughs> let's get into some bowling. Good luck to you. Thank you. That's really awesome. Bill said to David, Look, man, I think you're really good. I think you've got a long career ahead of you. You know what's ironic about that story is I remember when Bill O'Neill finished sixth at the U.S. Open, his first ever, and I made match play as well. And uh, myself, along with so many of the other uh, pros at that time, went up and congratulated O'Neill. And then O'Neill pays it forward. It's a beautiful story. This sport is full circle. On that left lane, Bill O'Neill strikes to start match number three. He owns three PBA regional titles, Boog. David Kroll. 17th on the PBA points list this season. Top 15 finish at the Players' Championship, which O'Neill won. He's kind of standing in front of the bar return already on the right lane. Come around. Look at that bender. I love his his uh, X handle too. At Booger Bowler. <laughs> Look how far in front of that bar return he's standing. These are longer bar returns than what the players are normally used to. So he has to get in front of it so he can get deep enough, and then he has to modify his approach. Look at this. Now it's uh, about two and a half steps. He plants, doesn't slide. And I assume he's going to stand that far up on the left lane so he can mimic the same motion on both lanes. He did. And back to back for Kroll, who told you he's in four wheel drive. Yeah. Well, I, he <laughs> talked about the fact that he doesn't slide at all. And, and I asked him about the, the soles on his shoes and he goes, yeah, he says, uh, I got some traction. I said, like, snow change? He goes, oh, yeah, four-wheel drive. <laughs> his mom gave him the nickname Boog. Same name as his dad, David. That's how she told him apart. Oh, 
O'Neal with back-to-back jacks. Randy, I got to ask you, in, in this day in the sport where everybody's talking about modernizing and power, speed, Bill continues to do it the traditional way. Tom Clark, the PBA commissioner, brought that up before, and then it can still be done the way Bill's doing it. How is he doing it? Well, he, he has great touch, great timing, and he he sees ball motion and he understands what the lanes are giving him and then he can create shapes he he knows what his equipment's going to do he makes all the right decisions and then he executes didn't execute there wow yeah. with four and seven Huh. This left lane is starting to become a punk. How so? Look how much it's hooking. Yeah. I mean, Bill was like, oh, well, I thought that was pretty good and went high. Oh, don't do it. It didn't do it. He's all right. Yeah, he was looking at that urethane ball possibly backing up and chopping the four off the seven, but no problem there. Pretty good. Oh, Kroll. Beautiful strike there in the first. Second was Brooklyn as he's using a game breaker four. All right. And that's a game breaker four what? hybrid. And that's what he's using on both lanes thus far. From Nixa, Missouri. Yeah, and that's because it was left. There's a lot of stuff being put on that pole ball going down the lane for for Bug. What a nice young man too. We got to speak with him this morning and just a pleasant, pleasant guy. Good cover. Spring football is about to hit a whole new level as the USFL and XFL come together to unleash the United Football League. Opening weekend kicks off March 30th on Fox with the USFL champion Birmingham Stallions taking on the XFL champion Arlington Renegades. The UFL this spring on ABC, ESPN, FS1, and Fox. Seven was the magic number for David all week. He led the seven game pre-tournament qualifier to make the main field. Oh my. Fortunate, fortunate. Sorry. Apologizing for going Brooklyn. <laughs> no player ever wants that to happen, but it's not like he's doing it on purpose. The Just Right Strike is brought to you by Just Bear, the mindful choice for high quality protein with no antibiotics ever. Just Right, Just Bear. Yeah, and just barely kicked the nine out late. Look at that. O'Neal punches right back. Look at that hook set shot. It's beautiful. Now, left lane. He's going to move. He's going to move his feet to the left. Probably leave his target the same and just cre in increase angle a bit more. Remember that if you just move your feet and you leave your target the same, the angle changes. This next shot's going to be very telling. So you make the adjustment, you make the move, and then you have to execute. Mm. Wow. He looks over at the monitor to get his numbers off the strike track. And O'Neill is scratching his head after this one. He liked it, and it still went high. So what does that tell you? So it's maybe a ball change where the both players need to go to something that's cleaner and weaker, or they have to start lofting it just to get it to, to the right side of the head pin. He liked it. 
Yeah, so I, I don't know how much more room Yo, Bill uh, has at the lay down trying to get that number. Crawl with the re-rack. So O'Neal has no more room to move on that left lane. His lay down is already at 39, according to Strike Track. So his only other option now is cleaner ball or airtime. You talked about him knowing, being so in touch with his equipment. Challenge. The 10. Good shot, good shot. Kroll did like it though. He got that one farther right down lane with a little bit of loft, watch this. There it is. Yep. You mentioned sixth at the U.S. Open this season. What a great event for him. Come on. Just like Lee. He defeated Tommy Jones and EJ Tech at each in a winner go home game seven. To earn this championship round appearance. Yeah, good point. You brought up that loft. We saw it there on the, on the right side. Look at how he got here with the bye in the round of 24. They started with three six-game right, qualifying rounds. And he's saying commit to it. Commit to what? Commit, commit, commit. Commit to all week. this move that he's going to make. He can't do it now. And believe in it so that he can throw a good shot here. I, I look for this ball to be in the air. Airborne. That was dirty bug there. Dirty bug. Lanes and entertainment. Let's talk about our wonderful host, Mike Zangi, the director of operations. Kim Justice Bowers, the owner. Bob Bowers, the owner of the Bowers family. We thank you. And Rita Justice, the founder and a PWBA champion. We appreciate everyone here at Mick County Lanes and Entertainment. The first time they have ever hosted a PDA national telecast. Where do we stand, Randy Peterson, in this Delaware Classic? Oh, God. Hates it. And that's why. Oh, God, come on. Steep. Here's David Kroll. That instantly cracks the door open. It does. I was going to ask you, where do we stand here? What's your thought process? Well, I think uh, I think Boog feels pretty good now in the left lane. He's just got to make a little bit better shot on the right and catch a double the next time he's up. Oh. And that's uh -oh. a big mistake for O'Neal. And it came on the right. Let's take a look at a comparison between EJ Tackett and Bill O'Neill in terms of creating power. We talk about it all the time, but you can see the cup, bent elbow, wrist, and how much straighter O'Neill's is. But they both do the same thing at the foul line. Look at a straight line to release the bowling ball. But the more cup in the elbow and wrist, the more revolutions you create. That's why EJ's rev rates Higher than Bill O'Neill's. Yeah, O'Neill needed that. Yeah, that was a good one. You know, Bill O'Neill still has plenty of power, but when you try to compare these rev rates and you get this deep on the lane, Bill has to be much more precise for pin carry. He said it's been as rewarding as any season thus far. Of course, you win the Good Players' morning. Championship, and you've been on four of six shows. But he said the thing was, it's exceeded any expectation he had. He had back issues last summer, big, yeah. big time back issues. David Kroll with that loft, and the ten stayed home. Wow. And the loft again is to delay hook. Right lane's tighter than the left. The curl right now is as deep as you can get on the lane. So he, if he doesn't loft it, he goes in the left gutter. All right, 
Good cover. We'll take a look at our 3D uh, by Strike Track and take a look at where the players were playing game one, or match one rather, to match three. Wow. And that's Lane's transitioning and breaking down. And I mean, it's real obvious, especially on the left lane. Almost seven boards at the launch at the laydown area. And here comes some airtime right here by the bug. No. Oh, my goodness. At the last second, it said, I'll grab a bite. Well, As he caught some fortune. Yeah, very fortunate there. He, he got it inside a target and went high and still struck, but this is a great break this late in this game. O'Neal trailing by 13, working on a strike, can cut it to three, but what a break right here for Boog. Not as fortunate for Bill. Man. Look good. It was. Everything about okay. that shot was good. If that 35 seconds doesn't sum up the sport at times. Uh, I thought it was real interesting what Bill told us during our interview with him this morning. He says, you know, when things go south, the game goes by so fast on television that you have zero time. Zero time to correct mistakes, and that's Miss Spare in the seventh frame Come on, make a good one. is daunting right now. Excuse me, sixth frame was the open for O'Neal, comes back in the seventh with a strike, and then ring 10 right behind it. Fifth in the U.S. Open, players champion. He told you a story about facing Jesper Svensson as well in our interview with him using a ball he never had plans to to play right there's strike yeah but i mean that's the difference with the 10 pin in the in the uh, eighth frame if he carries that hit he has a three a three bagger and the lead but yeah you're, you're talking about him and svensson in the bracketed finals where o'neill just chews up a piece of the lane for himself Jesper's left hand, he knows he's got it all to himself and uses that to his advantage to win that match. All right, 10 pin, 10 pin. Way better shots. And another mm. 10 pin. And look how wide that angle is getting on the right lane. So it's three consecutive 10 pins for Kroll on the right lane, but he also has two Brooklyns and one nosedive for strikes. Sometimes it's a cruel game. See how things are evening out? Look at that thing come back. Man. That thing came back from DC. <laughs> yes, it did. Sport give it, the sport take it away. You talked about those Brooklyns. As he goes to the left lane, let's look back. So here's the first Brooklyn on that lane. Then he barely catches the headpin running away on this shot. And fortunate enough just to trip the nine late. And then this one goes through the face and rolls the three pin forward. All on that left lane. Done it all week. Come in here. Eight years pro, now full time. This is Kroll's time. No. Wow. It comes up with another fortunate strike on the left. Can I have a re rack, Tony? Bro, what is going on right now? Commit to the shot. You've done it all week. Come on. Good for the 
Well, if he commits to this next shot and gets eight, he's going to shut out O'Neal. Three Brooklyns now, and one nose diver on the left lane. Forget about that one. Let's get it here. You dream of this. Come on. Man. No. Well, that changes things, especially on how he attempts to shoot this split. What do you think? Well, he needs to get at least eight. So cover this. That's a huge mistake. That is. A dream turned nightmare. An absolute nightmare. So now O'Neill can go strike nine spare. We have a tie. But for the win, O'Neill needs a double. Winner gets Thomas Kalka. Come on. Roll it. What a massive mistake by Kroll. If he. If he would have gotten eight, he takes the tie out of the equation. Here we go. Oh. Real deal. Oh, hey, carried one. Stay down and roll it. Stay down and roll it. The player's champion, a crowd favorite. That's a veteran look right there. That's a major championship winner look right there. 14 time champ. The other two players remaining have never won on the PBA tour. Experience wins a strike to advance to the final. Wow, the 10 wouldn't give. It's not over. Again, getting back to the count lost in the 10th frame for Kroll. O'Neill needs to cover the 10 pin to go to extra innings. And for David Kroll, his nightmare dream ended just before the worst part. We have a roll off. Wow. By PBA rule, this tie must be broken by a sudden death roll-off. David Kroll is elected to start the roll-off. You know, even if Kroll got seven. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. But he got he, he got 5-1. Five, Goes 5-2, five, 5-3. Five, He's moving right, on to the title match. Go with one. A couple. He gets an extra life. Kroll electing to go first. On the right with that loft, it comes around, and this time for Kroll! He delivers! And for Kroll, he's hoping he doesn't have to go another frame, because that means they would move to the left lane. Headpin was almost interrupted, but still has enough on it to take the 10 out. Now O'Neill must strike. Roll it. Needs a strike to stay alive. David Kroll is moving on to the finals. Oh. The satisfying moment of the match is sponsored by Snickers. Nothing satisfies like a Snickers. With his buddy, Kevin Williams, talking with him. David Kroll has a moment of satisfaction. What looked like tragedy. He was saved. It's responsive. 
And now he'll meet Tomas Kalka. And then there were two at the PBA Delaware Classic and Mid-County Lanes and Entertainment. And the two that we have left standing, the winner will be a first-time PBA Tour champion. Our top two seeds, Tomas Kalka from Mikkeli, Finland, taking on David Kroll, who got an extra life after a big mistake in the semis. Kroll getting saved with a roll off and beating Bill O'Neill. Now it's Kalka, the 25 year old, six years pro. He is not cashed on the tour this season, not even cashed. Now he could be a winner of $25,000. Here's Boog Kroll, his winning shot in the roll off. The messenger came and said, You're moving on. It's Kroll and Kalka. We will have a first time champion. That's something we have not had going bowling across America this season. The two time Association of Sports Journalists best bowler in Finland, Tomas Kanka. Well, he hasn't thrown a shot yet, and I've heard his name pronounced 12 different ways. <laughs> and I'm not even going to try it. Good luck, Tomas. It's like a bad interview from the movies from the movie Step Brothers. They went for that those job interviews and well, you know the rest. His last name is hard to pronounce. But his start is strong. What do you see in his game? I see a lot of moving parts, a very unorthodox two-handed style, something that's very unique. All to him. I wasn't sure how well he would do, given the fact of how much the lanes have broken down right, and how deep the players have to get, but his first okay. shot out of the gate looked pretty good. What's the key for this guy? Make better shots. I side. mean, he got away with one against O'Neal. Yeah, he did. This one's lofted right on top of the sixth arrow. So that's throwing it 15 feet in the air. Wow. It's a 15 pound ball with no thumb in it. Lot to ask. Covers and pull dash yeah, right over to the left. All right. Got to commit to the shot. He should be in a good mood because he's had multiple Brooklyns that have gone his way. He's also apologized a double digit amount of times. Well, he apologized to O'Neill. Nobody likes to win like that. And again, it's not like he was doing it intentionally, but that's sometimes the rub of the green in this sport. It's more like it. Yeah, and, and he's you know he's comfortable, and that shot's That's very telling for him because it lets him know, hey, as long as I get it in the air and get it going right, I've got a chance to strike on the left lane, the lane he has to finish the match on. That was his game. We have not seen that type of shot now in several. Alco are in the top seed for the stepladder as the top qualifier among the round of eight winners. Troublemaker on the left lane, and I'm trying to uh, Troublemaker Pearl on the right. There you go, I got it in. That's got a hook. Oh, it hooked too much. Wow. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be a little soft or a little lazy going down lane, and all of a sudden it just snapped. Sidestep to the left to get his body out of the way. He finished 19th in points during the 2023 season. He had yet to cash or finish better than 35th in a single event this season. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, everything you're saying is correct. He got drafted to the LAX uh, for this season, and yeah, I mean, his first check. It's just a little side swipe touch. Here's how he got here. How about under? Yeah, how about undefeated? Rolled. And after he beat Belmo four nothing because they're on LAX together, Belmo said, "All right, you're benched." Yeah, I mean, it's not like he beat two chumps. Tomas is now seeking a trade. No, we're just kidding. <laughs> He's on the waiver wire. <laughs> yeah, that's honestly, that's what I was afraid of for him on that left lane. He doesn't have the ball speed. He's about two to three miles an hour slower than all the other players. And on that left lane, you better bring some steam and some heat. I mean, you can see the loft, but he just doesn't throw it fast enough. And I'm not sure um, how well he's going to fare on this. He's going to have to make some kind of equipment change, I would think, to get the ball down the lane. On this Billy Hardwick 44. The Hardwick just got harder for Tomas. Good. It's probably wrong, but I tried it anyway. Back to crawl. <clears throat> David's first ever TV show. His opposition in this final, making just his third appearance. With that loft again, here it comes. And Kroll's picking up Steve. That's good, Booger. Good, Booger. Nice double there for Kroll. Watch the loft right here. You know, it's a good thing he's not like 6'5", right? Because, I mean, he wouldn't have any room. On the other side, Talca, he's currently playing Sudoku. Yo. Yo, what are we dropping over there? He picked up Sudoku Hi, earlier this week, just allowing him to be calmer in between shots. Picking up a page out of Kyle Troop's proverbial book. Kyle was reading a book last week in Route 2, a title in Indiana. Three six. Yeah, that was a little bit high, and a little bit left, wasn't it? Again, you got to trust this one. You're throwing it in the air and you're throwing it hard, but you know there's enough friction. You got to make better shots. He was working on a double. All right. But now just cover the three six and take a seat. Back-to-back -back strikes and an eight spare for Boog. Back to Kalka. Second career TV finals for him. He made the 2023 U.S. Open show, finished third in the event, which was won by E.J. Tackett. Tackett, a part of today's event, he fell to Tim Foy Jr. in our first matchup. John Fanta, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, our entire Fox Sports crew with you. Delaware Classic Championship match. Whoever wins will be a first time PBA Tour champ. Come on over. Ooh. Sorry, I've got plans. No, wait, wait. Oh, no, a little no, short no. pin. No, I, I've got plans, okay? I already bought the groceries for dinner. I'm cooking at home tonight. There is a lot of ammo coming after that 10 pin. Oh. Just saying. Let's go down to the floor with Dino Castillo. 
PBA Tour champion. Dino, uh, the oil pattern's starting to show its teeth. I mean, they're, they're starting to look pretty nasty. What's going on, and what do you see? Well, the left lane is just gone. They, uh, they're doing everything they can to get it through the front. The problem is, is the more they loft, the actual, it actually picks up too quick. So trying to get it through the front is the key. Thomas does, does better getting it, spinning it through the front. Bug's going to have some trouble. He's got to find a way to either throw over it or just spin it to the front. So it's going to come down to the wire. It's going to come down to this left lane. I think they got the right down pretty good, but this left lane is going to be is going to be either the Terminator or the winner here. Dino, was that a ball change on the left lane for Kako? No. No, nope, same uh, ball. He stayed with the same ball, just trying to do something a little different. All right. Thanks, Dino. You're welcome. That type of access is just outstanding to be able to, to hear what's happening. The left lane will be the, the terminating factor, the terminator. Oh, see it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, it's right. One, two, three. Yeah, that come wide. Any wider. Yeah, it could have been zero. You know, Tino made a great point. It's like, you know, the, the players are, it's, well, Boog is, is lofting and trying to throw it halfway down the lane. And, and the problem is what, when you're doing that, you tend to catch the ball in the upswing, and that makes you hit up on it, which makes the ball read even earlier. So it's kind of a combination of lofting it and then not hitting up and still getting it to go to the right. It's not that easy to do. She said 15-pound ball. And all he had to do was get that one in the floor and make it go Brooklyn. Yeah. Although he has some experience with Brooklyn today, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. Multiple. Not intentionally. No, no. That's a good cover, and he maintains a 19-pin lead. And now back to the left. Yeah. She's going to determine this. No, I, th I think so. He came back. Yep. I think it's all about the left lane and... Kroll's going to finish the match on the left lane. During COVID, he almost decided to give everything up in this sport and get a 9-5 to five job. Just woke up one day and said, I can't give this up. During that off time, during COVID, he practiced as much as he could. Fell back in love with it. And just now believes, believes in his abilities. And that sixth at the US Open that we talked about served as validation that he belongs, that he can be here, that he can win. Right now with a lead. Praying for this plastic ball to slide into the 3-6-10, and it does just enough. But you can see just how much the lanes have deteriorated. This oil pattern. See it longer. Yeah. What happens is you're getting. You know, not, listen into this. The thing is, it's not getting too much. Yes. Kevin Williams chatting with him. Great friends. That ball's super responsive down lane for Tomas. And getting back to the deterioration of the oil pattern, our high game thus far today, 244, that was in our first match. Since then, a 209, a 184, and a couple of 203s. 244 coming from Tim Foy. Yep. Will be Tackett. This is Bowling's version of Survivor. Cover for Kalka. You see that flag on his left sleeve from Finland. And there's plenty of Finnish history in the PBA. Yeah, the most famous being Mika Koivuniemi, and, and then there's Osku Palermo with five titles, but Mika was, he was the heavy hitter. Uh, 
several major championship victories to his credit. They used to call him Major Mika. Gave Norm Duke one, missing a 10 pin. But just a, a great career for Mika. Uh oh. It looked left and it was. Fortunate just to leave the four pin. But you can't make up ground if you can't double. Right now, it's 17 in favor of Kroll. NASCAR race day from Las Vegas is coming up next here on FS1. We're in the seventh of this championship match uninterrupted here on FS1. The left lane is just, you did good to spin through it, get to lot, see it longer, but that one you just Everybody's looking for help. Deal with this. Kroll knew it. He knew it right away. One of his best. I mean, I think it's just so crazy why, you know, and that's what the tour reps jobs are. Remember, they work with their entire staff and, you know, these ball companies, these manufacturers have pretty big staffs, especially when it's a Brunswick and they have so many different brands, but Storm's got a big staff and Motive's got a big staff. And these tour reps are, are they're, they're part of the process and they're involved with every player. You see Dino giving advice to both Kroll and Tomas. Big shot here can, can increase the lead to 27 here in the eighth frame. And it comes on the left. And Kroll belongs in almost Brooklyn. No, that there's that that's Brooklyn. <laughs> Wow. Not as extreme as some of the others. This is That's high, Brooklyn. This is high flush Brooklyn. I mean, it's, it, no, not as extreme as the one that almost missed the head pin left, but that, I mean, that's a, a great pocket hit for Jesper Svensson. And then you see he tried to throw it farther down lane and it just made it hook earlier. And now Kalka has a lot of work to do. Goodness, the same ball that was so down lane reactive, and this time it's got nothing on it. Just has not been Kalka's day. Well, we're going to crown a new champion, and it's starting to look more and more like we're going to crown the bug. Now, David Kroll from Missouri can taste this. He has never won on the PBA Tour. For Kalka, certainly a, an encouraging week after he hadn't even cashed. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and encouraging in that sense, but this is a very discouraging performance here in the title match. I mean, if he doesn't double, he can shoot 170. Mm. If he goes spare, strike, spare. Cole's already in the two teens. Second place gets 15,000. Top prize, 25K. And that's Kalka's best of the day. And I, I think you really have to feel for O'Neill, right? I mean, this guy got beat by some Brooklyns and a nosediver, made some quality shots down the stretch. That ring and 10 pin forces OT. And the, I mean, then you missed, no, it, at the missed it at the bottom. In the process. Doesn't have much of a chance. He can shoot 190. So this is pretty much over with a strike here in the ninth frame by 
Kroll. Kroll is playing for a former pro, Sean Swanson. Yep. Sean took David under his wing. David worked in both of Sean's pro shops. And Sean may rest in peace. Sean passed away on his own birthday. That was the day that David married his wife, Hazel. Mm. He's got a tattoo in Sean's honor on his arm. And he said all of this, this run, this run is in honor of Sean Swanson. His love for the sport reestablished through influences like Sean. He bowls doubles with Kevin Williams, who he was visiting with earlier, and David Boog Kroll. There it is, right there, just needs pins. He lived life in Brooklyn some, but Boog is a first time PBA champion and there's no apology needed for that. A month ago at the US Open, Dino Castillo told me about this young man. He said, watch out, watch out for Boog. And I'm like, Boog, who's Boog? And he pointed him out and I watched David Bolsom at that event and I said, wow, this kid's impressive. But he had a lot of really good things go his way today and you have to have that to win on the tour. He won three PBA regionals last year. That's it. David Kroll is your Delaware Classic champion, and Boog is a first time PBA champ. The 2024 PBA season continues in two weeks with PBA All-Star Weekend. Three straight days of PBA coverage beginning Friday, March 15th with the All-Star Skills Showdown 6 Eastern on FS1. Coming up next, NASCAR Race Day in Las Vegas. For Randy Peterson, Kimberly Press, our entire crew, I'm John Fanta. David Book Kroll is your Delaware Classic Champion. You've been watching the PBA on FS1.